Chris Sewell here, baseball card collector, investor, dealer in that order. Welcome, everyone. Follow-up to the uh, moral gray area video we put out last week. I uh, just presented three situations in the hobby and asked everyone to comment with that, whether they thought there was any wrongdoing here, and if so, where was the line? Uh, before you watch this one, if you haven't seen that, I, I recommend you watch that one first just so you sort of know exactly what we're talking about here. I've included a link to it in the description below. But a lot of people left a lot of fantastic comments. I read through every single one, pulled out a bunch uh, here, and we're going to go through each scenario one by one, sort of uh, review what all of you uh, thought, and then I'll, I'll sort of throw in some, uh, some of my thoughts as well. All right, so the first scenario was regarding these tops through the years cards, and uh, mainly dealing with the title of an eBay listing, like what, what's acceptable. I, mean, I think here we all agree is a perfectly acceptable eBay listing. Uh, these are 2021 Topps cards, and there's nothing misleading about this uh, this listing at all. Here's one that we all would say is, is is clearly misleading and not okay. It leads off with 2017, which it's not. It says Inception, Autograph, Auto, Jumbo Patch, Rookie, Rookie. All, all those words don't apply. It doesn't say anything about reprint in the title. Uh, very misleading listing here. But then there are some that are sort of in between, like this one. Mike Trout, 2021 Tops through the years, TTY9 Tops, RP, Patch Auto 2 Dynasty. Uh, leads off correctly. The first, you know, three-fourths of the listing all, all are correct. It does say RP for reprint. Uh, but then it has some words there, Patch, Auto 2, Dynasty. Those are words that apply to the card that's in the photo on the card, not the card itself. So that can be misleading. And clearly in this particular listing, it was misleading as the card sold for nearly $200 in auction. And it's, it's not worth anywhere near that. So... Uh, you know, the question is, well, where's sort of the line? Well, what, what can you include in, a, in an eBay listing title when you're listing a, one of these cards? And there was a fairly wide range of responses on this one. Uh, but before I get to that, I'm going to I'll mention that a lot of people left a comment regarding, you know, the real mistake was made by Tops in the first place having made these. Like, this is just something that is clearly going to invite, you know, uh, misleading sellers into taking advantage of newer collectors. And I think that, uh, yeah, I, I, of course, agree with that. But there was a wide range of responses It's sort of, you know, on one end, there was a, a number of comments that uh, you should not be able to put a single misleading word. So you should not be able to, for this particular card here, you should not be able to put 2017, Inception, Autograph, Jumbo, Patch, Rookie, none of those should be allowed. It should just be 2021 tops through the years, Aaron Judge, and, and that should be all you're allowed to, to, uh, to put in the listing. On the other extreme end, you know, there were a lot of comments that, hey, this is a buyer beware situation. If you're spending your hard-earned earn money on a baseball card on eBay, you need to do your research and be aware of what you're buying. Uh, if you look at this card and don't realize that it's an auto or a patch, that's on you. And there was lots of in, in, in the middle, you know, uh, comments about, uh, you, you know, you can put some of those words, but if you do, you need to put reprint in big, bold letters or, or you know, make it very, very clear. Uh, somehow that, you know, this is not an actual autograph or patch card. So for me, the buyer beware argument, you know, I agree with that to some extent, especially if it's, you know, me buying a card. Uh, I, I would, if I get duped, I would basically put it on me at this point. I'm a card expert. I should know what I'm doing. I should do my due diligence on any card I'm spending, you know, money on. But the, the thing I don't like about it is as a blanket statement, you know, in part for this from this comment here, which I think is a really good point, you know, so grandma that knows nothing about cars decides to go on eBay to buy her grandson something nice for his birthday. Maybe her grandson's favorite player is Aaron Judge and he likes cards. And so she goes on, on eBay and, and buys this and, and it's her fault for being duped because she's not an expert. And yeah, that's exactly right. You know, uh, you, both things can be true. And I think both things are true. You know, buyer beware is, is, is true and should always be true, but that doesn't mean that sellers, you know, are allowed to mislead. And I think a great way to look at this is, you know, not what's allowed on eBay, because everything's allowed on eBay. Anyone can list anything they want and put any words they want in the title, and eBay is not going to catch most of it. But if you go to the vault companies, and I've mentioned, you know, for me, the buying and selling experience is so much better in a lot of these vaults than eBay. And one of the reasons for that is because these are professional sports card companies, and they list the title of the card for you. You're not allowed to, you know, list the card, the title of the card as whatever you want. Uh, they list the title of the card. Here's a Com C example. 2021 Tops Through the Years Blue, TTY 15, Hank Aaron. There's no autograph there. There's no uh, luminaries or, or words that could be misleading, and you can't add them in because this is a, a vault company. And uh, to me, that's the correct title of the card and, and the proper way to list the card. Uh, here's another example. The Trout, 2021 Tops Through the Years Blue, TTY 9, Mike Trout. That's it. There's no autograph. There's no jersey. There's no dynasty. And you can't, there's no one of one, and you can't go in and add that to the title uh, as you can on eBay. And and I think that adding those words is, is clearly misleading. Here's how it's done on PWCC, exact same as ComC, another vault company. 2021 tops through the years, Hank Aaron, TTY 15. There's no uh, autograph, there's no luminaries, again, no words that can be misleading. 
and for me personally that's the uh the only sort of correct way to list the the light the list type of card on ebay now i wouldn't really have much of a problem if somebody included some of these words and, and also included a reprint in in caps in the title so it was very obvious but uh for me personally you know i think leaving all those words out is is really the correct way to to list the card all right the second scenario was whether uh you should state uh, previous grades of a card that has been regraded. And I gave two examples of my own personal examples. It's Nolan Arenado, Rookie Auto. Uh, this was once in a PSA 6 holder, then a PSA 5 holder. I cracked it both times, sent it to Beck, and it got a BGS 9.5, as you can see here. So if I go to sell this card, should I disclose to the buyer or potential buyers that this was once in a PSA 6 holder and a PSA 5 holder? So, you know, Beckett's opinion that it's a de gem mint card, but another expert company, quote-unquote expert company, PSA, uh, thought that this was a, a mid-grade, you know, five or six. So am I obliged to disclose that? I also gave the other example, a Michael Jordan rookie that I own. Uh, it's an SGC4. This was originally sent to PSA. PSA deemed it as altered, and uh, they, they would not give it a number grade because they felt it had been altered. I sent it off to SGC. SGC did give it a number grade, gave it a four. So if I'm selling this card, should I disclose that this was, you know, that PSA considered this card altered? So the comments on this one were essentially unanimous, not not quite unanimous, but I'd say 80 to 90 percent of people leaving a comment said you do not need to disclose previous grades. And there are a lot of great points around this. Uh, here was one who said, you know, if you crack a card and resubmit it for grading, you're taking upon a, a major risk on yourself to spend a lot of time and a lot of money uh, to, to send the card back in. You're taking on a huge gamble and, you know, you should you should, you know, get, get the upside of that gamble if it happens to, to work out. Uh, I really like this point point a lot. He wrote, I don't think you need to disclose. It's like buying a house. You hire an inspector to take a look and they deem it's in good shape or not. The inspector you used when you originally bought your house may have a much different opinion than the new inspector that comes in when you're ready to sell, but you're not required to tell every last detail. For example, maybe the original inspector thinks an outdoor deck should be removed, but the other thinks it's in good shape. Uh, and and so, you know, in that, sort of, in that situation, no one would say you have to include the first inspector's opinion and same thing with the, with the grading here. A couple of you said that this is something that needs to be disclosed, but again, the vast majority of you said that it does not. And uh, for me personally, I'm, I'm in agreement with the vast majority of you here. You know, I, I don't feel that this is something that needs to be disclosed up front. If you're asked about it, uh, you need to be truthful. And a couple of you left that point, and I thought that was a great point. Uh, you need to be truthful and, and, and state. But if you're just sort of selling it online or at a card show, you know, I, I don't think that that needs to be, uh, to, to be stated. What you're doing here is you're selling a basketball card that SGC, in their opinion, feels is in VGEX4 condition, and no sort of previous grades interferes with, with that. Another great point that a bunch of you uh, mentioned in the comments was, if I had sold this card raw uh, after it had been deemed authentic altered by PSA, and I just sort of, and I, you know, not disclosed that, uh, I think clearly there would be some wrongdoing there, and I, I, I totally agree. Uh, you know, if you have a card or, or an autograph and you send it in for authentication and it doesn't pass, like, it's deemed a, a, a fake or a reprint or not authentic or altered or, you know, trimmed or whatever. And you just sort of ignore that opinion and sell it, you know, raw anyway without disclosing that. You know, I feel like clearly a line has been crossed there. And, and same with if you send it to like an authentication company that isn't considered credible in the hobby and then sell it that way. I think a, a line's clearly been crossed uh, there. A, a couple of you left that comment, which was, again, I thought was a great point. But you know, in this particular case, I, I think, you know, the hobby considers SGC's opinion to be legit and, and, and just as credible as PSA's. All right, and the last topic was uh, these very elaborate custom cards and, and what sort of acceptable when you have a legit auto on a, you know, fake card that has been designed to look like a super fancy expensive card from, you know, National Treasures or something like that. Here was a Bryce Young example where the card is actually fake. It's just been made by somebody in their garage, but the auto is legit. It's on a legit sticker auto, and PSA has authenticated the auto. You can see that the, the title there just says sticker. The only thing authenticated by PSA here is the auto on the sticker. Uh, here's an, another example of a Proc Purdy, and this card actually sold for $1,500 in auction. Again, only the sticker auto is legit. Everything else about the card is a, is a fake, but it is in a legit PSA holder as they've authenticated the, uh, the auto. And a lot of great points came up about this in the comments, and a number of you wrote that PSA should not authenticate items like this, and I completely understand that sentiment, but I also feel like autograph collectors, they like their autographs on all sorts of random stuff, you know, 3 by 5 cards, for example, or if I made a custom card of me and Cal Ripken, and I got Cal Ripken to sign it, and I just wanted it authenticated for my PC, you know, I feel like, I feel like that should be okay. 
Uh, but to take it one step further, I thought this was a great point, just sort of expanding on that. You know, I don't mind PSA or any other grading company authenticating autos, but I do believe PSA and all grading companies have an obligation to differentiate legit from custom, either on the label or on the size of the slab or something, maybe the colors. I just feel like the grading companies are adding to the confusion, misrepresentation, and that I completely agree with. Uh, first glance at the, say, this Brock Purdy, you know, there's nothing to suggest, you know, if you're just taking a quick look at the label, there's nothing to suggest that the card is a fake. You sort of have to zoom in closer and, you know, understand PSA's uh, wording here. There's nothing on the label that says custom card or fake card. That would make it very, very clear. Uh, so I really, I really like that point. So yeah, I definitely agree that PSA shares some blame here. But for me, the bigger culprit is, other than the seller, of course, is, is eBay. Uh, much like the Through the Years cards, you know, on eBay, you can list a card however you want. You can put any sort of misleading words in the title you want. And eBay's just not going to catch it the vast majority of the time. And, you know, this point here, I think, is, is spot on. You, you can make a custom card and authenticate the sticker auto perfectly fine in doing so. But to put in the description, rookie, RC, patch, or a brand, or one of one, is totally wrong and misleading. Absolutely agree. You know, this Brock Purdy here... Uh, look at all these words, you know, NFL Shield, uh, Patch, Auto, Gold, SP, Super Short Print. I mean, these words don't apply to this card at all. For me personally, the only sort of acceptable title here would be, you know, Custom Card, Brock Purdy, Autograph, you know, PSA uh, 10 for the auto. Something like that. Just no other words in there that don't apply to the card. So for me, that's the sort of unacceptable aspect of this listing by the seller here, uh, but, but also should not be allowed by eBay. And if you want to take it one step further, when you sell a card like this on eBay, you're, you're required to check a box saying that this is a, a fake card or a custom card. Uh, and I, how about when, when you do that, you know, you eBay puts right there in the front of the, the listing some, you know, big note, fake card, custom card. Uh, so, you know, a potential buyer can't miss it. You know, maybe that's overkill, but I personally don't think it is at the, at the moment. Uh, to figure out if the card is a fake or a reprint, you have to go scroll way down and look at the Look at the notes of the card, and, you know, sometimes it's like the 10th note. I mean, no, it should be right there at the front, very, very big and obvious uh, for everyone to see. A number of you left a question or, or a statement that, you know, is this legal? Are you, are you allowed to use NFL logos and player images and team logos on an item you're reselling? And I really don't know. I, I would guess that it is illegal. I, I don't think you're allowed to, uh, you're, you know, you're certainly allowed to make a card like this for your own enjoyment, but you, I, I don't think you're allowed to resell it given that it has licensed images of, of all these things, uh, but I really don't know. You know, I've certainly seen, you know, uh, painters making paintings with famous people in it, I, I'm guessing without permission. So I, I don't know where the line is. If anyone understands the legal aspect of this really well, I would appreciate, you know, any any comments on it as uh, I, would, I would love to be more informed about it. And we'll just uh, finish on this comment here, which, which uh, made me laugh. Whenever I run into athletes, I instantly whip out my roll of scotch tape and I ask them to, uh, to sign it. Uh, yeah, exactly. But that's it. Thank you, everyone, for all the, the great comments. Uh, really love hearing from everybody. And, you know, again, with this one, how do you, how do you feel about my, my positions? Do you think I'm, I'm off on anything? Did I overlook anything? Do you think I'm spot on or, or whatever? And, again, if you know anything about the legal aspect of the uh, that Brock Purdy card, would love to hear about it. But really, really appreciate it, as always, and see you all again next time. Thanks, everyone.